All right, welcome, welcome, hello, welcome, welcome to Invite Synth. Thank you guys so much for being here. Everybody in the chat, all the places, all the places we are everywhere. Uh, Kick, Twitter, two different Twitters, two different YouTubes, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitch right now, uh, TikTok and Instagram. Got those loaded up, ready to go. We're excited. We're pumped. We're going to play some Call of Duty today. And I think I know why it's lagging a little bit because my computer doesn't typically handle Call of Duty really well. So I think that's where you'll see a little bit of jump, jump, uh, jumping around. I may be hard to hit. I may be hard to hit. See that? It's because this game, I need to, I need to put it down a little. Um, but guys, thank you so much for being here. We're going to play some Call of Duty with the most amazing and the most kind and the most awesome. Street Taco Eater, how are you today, sir? You're up fast welcome, welcome, hello. Can you hear me all right? I can. Okay, yeah, welcome. I'm Sorry, excited. Let me, I mean, I'm excited as well. I may need to turn down my audio here just a little bit. Okay, sure. In the game. Yeah, the and, game audio uh, is always the fun part. Because it's, uh, it's pretty loud. So let me do that really quick. And then uh, we're good. 100%, 100%. Yeah, Beautiful. always when you load in, that's always the... Yep. The crazy part of it. I definitely need to change my... I'm going to play with, like, low graphics. That's the best way. I don't usually play Call of Duty on my streams just because I know my computer has no fun. Well, it's great It's great to have you uh, convert back over. I love <laughs> Fortnite as well, trust me. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, this is definitely my go-to. I'm going to... I'll have to run... I usually run, like, 200 render resolution. I'm going to run down to 100. But, you know, that'll, that'll probably be better. But, hey... Welcome to the show. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we got time. I know we had, we were good this a few weeks ago. I think it was spring break or something we had going on. So thank you for letting me reschedule and, yeah, and jump in. Absolutely. Um, but uh, I've been seeing you a lot of stuff you've been doing. But I want to go back to 1978 is where I want to start. Okay. When you played Atari and Pong and you played in um, like we all did. I mean, I'm 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 41. So I still played in the arcades, yep. but um, what was the change for you from Atari to arcades to Nintendo? How was that? Pro how was that? How was that world? What what what, what were the big? The big I mean, it was it was, it was it was super easy, right? I mean, I've been mm -hmm. playing for a while. I mean, I was playing, I was playing pinball. Sorry, I didn't. I was going to ping an area. I did. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I was busy setting my settings up. So. Um, it was, you know, I've been playing pinball for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, this uh, yeah. is, I have just started using controller. I've been mousing oh. keyboard for 20 years. So this may really? take me a little bit to get used to it. Yeah. Well. So, um, no, I've been playing pinball. My uncle in 1975 or six or whatever it was, got me okay. an Atari for home TV uh, wow. system. And uh, I was hooked. He knew I enjoyed that kind of stuff. And uh, my mom certainly couldn't afford it. So he got it for me. <laughs> And I was, it was great. I mean, from that point on, um, okay, I got to figure, hold on. Whoa. I got to figure out um, how to not do that. <laughs> I need to figure out how to plate. Okay. Well, I got to get rid yeah, of this guy Yeah, here. this is true. This is okay, true. I think it's go. E on the key. Well, E on the keyboard. Obviously, I don't know how to do it on the controller. Yeah, You're right. yeah, yeah. It's Y. I think I got it here. Okay. Um, and uh, so that, I was hooked on that. Uh, and plating. I am so not. I'm so not. I'm oh, so not used to uh, to controller on this, and I don't play Resurgence very much. <laughs> I'm waiting for oh. Rebirth. Um. So right. yeah. So that was great. And then I think it was what was it? Early '80s, mm -hmm. uh, mid '80s or so. Arcades became a thing, and um, I was I was completely hooked. Yeah. Um. I think back then, you know, once I discovered. Once I discovered, uh, for me, the go-to was, was, and there'll be OGs that remember this. I mean, you're 41, yeah. I'm 61. Mm -hmm. Hold on nice. here, I'm in a fight. Oh, I, almost. Oh, okay. controller, okay. I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to stay alive so you can come back. Okay. Um, for me, Asteroids and Galaga Ooh, were like, wow. like nice. my games. And uh, I was unbeatable at those two. I mean, I was looked <laughs> ever, you know, from through all of that. And then when... Uh, all the arcades really started popping. I used to work at a pizza place when I was a teenager, and they had okay. they had asteroids there. <clears throat> um, 
but I was hooked. It just was, I don't know why, it just was a thing, and it's always been a continuing uh, love of gaming. And not just gaming, it was the community. Right. Uh, I'm dropping in here above you. It was the communities okay. that you develop and friends you develop as well. Did you, did you ever read or see Ready Player One? Was that on your I list? I mean, I, I think I just watched it again for like the sixth uh -huh. time. <laughs> Well, the eighty. I mean, I'm I'm reading the mo reading the second book again for okay. the fifth time, and uh, and yeah, I watch it quite often. But that that eighties nostalgia is always so much fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a ton of culture and lore and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. about that time frame, and and yeah. uh, you know, and for me being a baby, I mean, so when people come in and they say, "Hey, boomer, what are you doing?" It's actually <laughs> kind of a compliment because I'm <laughs> I actually am a baby boomer. Um, so my perspective yeah. on it, I was a little bit older when gaming really started rocking. So all that stuff in Ready Player One are, mm -hmm. are definitely very Perfect. true for me. Yeah. Well, then let's go to the 90s here. Uh, you, you are a Doom fan. You you do like Doom. I like Doom. I enjoyed playing Doom and making maps on uh, like DOS or ASCII or whatever it was with the red yep. lines and the blue line. I don't know if you were a map maker at all. I was not. I really... I really I think I don't know what it was about Doom, but it was just this. It was just something that. Okay. Uh, it, it 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 was you know early on FPS. It was one of the yep. early on FPSs. Yep. So what what for you with Doom in the nineties? I mean, well, let's see. You were in your, you were in your twenties by then. <clears throat> so it, yeah. So I was born in nineteen sixty three. Okay. So um, I would have been you know so in the in the mid I mean nineteen or nineteen ninety three. I was thirty mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. Uh, Doom was the first, was one of, not the first, Doom was one of the first um, PC games that I mm -hmm. played. Okay. And um, I mean, what's not to like? It just was an incredible, it was the next evolution of, I, I'm trying to think, I think I was, when we started playing, I think I was in college. Oh, I um, And uh, yeah, I see him right over here. What a jerk. Camping the loadout. I broke him. I'm going to push him. All right. You got this controller master. Controller. The ma no, it's no. not. This, this, this controller, it's, I'm telling you, this is, uh, I've only been doing this about three weeks. And so it's, and this is the first time, this is just for you, Bubba. This is the first time I'm using controller on nice. resurgence. So. And you're, you're getting these sweaty lobbies with your 100, your level 419 over here. I think, yeah, well, my, my level eight, uh, my level eight lobbies aren't. I thought you were gonna carry me with those uh, zero build Fortnite skills. That's what I was looking forward to. <laughs> the, the, I'm telling you, the movement is so different, man. It just, I just feel like I'm, I feel like my real self. I just played basketball a couple hours ago, yeah, and I just, I didn't, I didn't play like in a week, and I just felt so sluggish. That's exactly how I feel when I'm playing Call of Duty right now. <laughs> it's yeah, just yeah. running through molasses. Um, yeah, it's the same thing if you go, I mean, if I go back and play Fortnite, it's the same uh -huh. kind of thing. It's just so different. Yeah. So, okay. Um, now, I, you know what's funny is, and this is this is moving to the 2000s here, it, like 90% of the guests I have on these shows are World of Warcraft players. I don't know yep. if I just interview a lot of people between the ages of, I don't know what I need to do here. I think you have control because I can't get Play out. Again. There we go. Oh, we have to get out. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it is like people between the ages of 30 and 60 and just World of Warcraft players. What, how, I want to I know if you, you've played WoW, are you, were you a WoWer? Did you, did you, Die did you know how many hours? Okay. So how many Die hours do you think you put in and what was your favorite expansion? Oh man. <clears throat> I stopped when I was heavily into it. I stopped playing. I think, I think. I think uh, Wrath of the Lich King was my last official wow, that's, um, that's expansion. Um, it started getting kind of strange for us OGs then. Sure. It was like, you sure. know, when the Death Knights came out, it was like, really, you could start at level 55. <laughs> 55 <right? laughs> and so it was, uh, that was a little, anyway. So uh -huh. I in, in stream, it's funny because I, I will yell out what in my gameplay, you know, Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. And nice. If you are a, an OG World of Warcraft mm -hmm. player, then you know what that is. Yeah. Um, I probably, geez, I probably have, you know, I probably have four or 5,000 hours in World of Warcraft. Um, wow. It was, uh, it just, it was everything about it. I just loved, right? It was a whole new kind of evolution of, of gaming. It was my first exposure to an MMORPG. Um, I was a, I had, you know, both Horde and Alliance uh, uh, tunes 
Um, I was a caster. I've always, I'm not mm. really a melee like tank guy. I'm really kind okay. of a mid range player. So I had I like that. Uh, I like that. both frost and fire mages. Um, you know, love to run a bunch of end game dungeons and raids and different things. So okay. that the biggest thing with that, I think that was my first real introduction, mm -hmm. probably to real community and online gaming because you know yeah, you have big yeah. guilds and you're you're regularly with people. Right. Um, and so I just yeah, I just kind of fell in love with it. But once you like I said, once you got to Wrath of the Lich King, I think I kind of mm -hmm. ended there, and then I took a break. And then when Vanilla came back out not long Ooh, ago, a few yes. years ago, yes. I was all over it. And same, so we, we played a bunch of Vanilla, and it was uh, that was fun. Yes, I'm very much the same. Uh, we we jump back in uh, continually. So it was like December 21 or so. I don't actually mm -hmm. December 22 maybe 22, I think. And uh, yeah, I think we all. Yeah, well, 22. and it was crazy too because you forget. Um, I forgot how bad the grinds are through certain levels yes. too, right? And it's just you remember those days of just mm -hmm. you know through, especially in the in the fifties, late forties, you know, fifties. It's just uh -huh. yes, going to Desolus and all these other places. And uh, I love that you played both Horde and Lance because I I was definitely I was a person who and if I jump back into it, which I probably will in six months, who knows when something else happens, is I would always just every every six months start a new. Uh, character, I loved. I loved leveling to like level fifty or thirty. Yep. I just don't know what it was. I just enjoyed yep. that, and I didn't. <clears throat> I didn't raid a whole lot, or much. Were you? Did you raid? Uh, um, I did. I there? did quite a bit for a while. We yeah. had a pretty good guild. Um, nice. The, the challenge with raiding is that you always the scheduling is always tough, and then depending on the tune that you play, you have people that will. You know, it's like for example, if you play a healer. If I played my druid. Yeah. You could get into a raid anytime, even yes, if it wasn't 100%. here. Yes, 100%. But if you're battle, trying to battle tank or, and everything, yeah, yeah. or DPS, you're mm -hmm. just kind of like, eh, yeah, if we can fit you in. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I, You know, I did enjoy... So as it, as retail got into past Cataclysm and everything, they started uh, oh, creating... Oh, Oh, sweet. <clears throat> I got I a gun. I got a gun. I didn't even see him. Oh, yeah, he's shooting at me. Oh, my gosh. Oh my, I got a few hits on him, but I'm dead. Um, so yeah, I, uh, oh, we already, are we already out? We're out. Oh yeah, my I God. Was, I was more, I was more talking about World of Warcraft because <laughs> I was paying attention and someone was right on me. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the show where, where a boomer and a millennial jump in and uh, get destroyed before we land. So welcome to the show. Okay. Um, the, I, they, they added a component in, uh, you know how, wow. I mean, I started December 04 and I know that was like right after beta and cause I was playing EverQuest right before mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I loved EverQuest. Um, but, uh, back maybe after Cataclysm it was after, after Wrath of Lich King, they mm -hmm. added a, they added a, um, looking for group, uh, model for you to just zone into the dungeons no matter where yep. you were and yep that was super helpful to level and so i did that mm -hmm. as a you know a paladin tank over and over or a druid mm -hmm. tank or whatever and i just i just kept running and running and recreating new characters and so that was <clears> helpful but it's but then when when vanilla came back out yes okay you had the meeting stones even though that wasn't really a thing way early on yep that was still like oh, had, getting people going to cities communicating in uh, group four chat group and trying to find people, then you get finally a warlock to meet somewhere and you pick people up and you then make it to Scarlet Monastery six hours later. <laughs> you do stuff. Well, we used to do a lot of, two of my boys, one of them in particular, so my all six of our kids gamed when they were growing up and mm -hmm. I still game with <coughs> with a couple of them, but yep. the um, we would do some smurf runs. So you'd, you'd, you know, you'd build a level 19 rogue or something and uh -huh. and go into Warsong Gulch and just melt people. And yes, that was, right. uh, we had a lot of yeah. fun doing that. Yeah. And yes. you know, when smurfing was a really big Rogan, thing. And yes. as a matter of fact, when people talk about smurfing now, they probably don't even realize where mm -hmm. it comes from. Um, but we were, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that in World of Warcraft as well. Now you played a lot of Halo with your kids growing up. From played a lot of Halo. Was, we have a which, lot of which, Halo. Which Halo number and which one was the most and which one was the most exciting with your kiddos? You know, I don't know there was, I mean, all the, the Master Chief series, you know, mm -hmm. now are, are amazing. I, I yeah. think for me, 
it's always people ask that question all the time. Like, you know, for example, like, what's your favorite Call of Duty? Well, I, I mean, I would say mm. if I had to pick one, I would say Black Ops 2. But when it comes to Halo, yeah. for me, I've always told people that I enjoy my favorite version of the game, edition of the game, is the one I'm currently playing. And um, I don't really reminisce as much about different versions of the game as much as I do with experiences with people. So for our kids, when I, you know, our couple, a couple of my boys were young. Well, all of the boys were young. But yeah. it was more about just getting on and playing together. So yeah, I don't yeah. know with Halo. I, I'm not one of those, like, even in World of Warcraft, that wasn't really all about the lore. It was more about the activity with friends and my kids. Yeah, 100%. So I want to go now to... So next Monday, you'll be 61 years old. Yes, and sir. happy early birthday. Thank you. Do you ever look back and wonder, since the Gamertag Street taco by itself was taken that you maybe your identity or your brain would be different if you were like you chose something different like street taco lover or street taco hater or street taco i don't know <laughs> what did what why did eater i know you i know you love tacos and you eat them a couple yep. times a week yeah um but why 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 not why something different? Why not something different than Eater? And it, what, what would your what would your brand be? Would you would you be going across the globe, doing things and getting tacos and eating them uh, on tours, or would you just be going around talking about how you love tacos? I don't know. I just I, I was I always wondered. I, obviously, why from eater? from why Eater. You know, I think it was um, when I when I decided on street tacos. So I was born in Los Angeles and I grew mm -hmm. up in Southern California. So I've been eating street tacos for as long as I can remember. Um, and I, I think that was the main thing. Street taco obviously was chosen for or taken for everything. Yeah. Um, but when I thought about it, well, what am I really? I'm a street taco eater. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I eat them. I love them. And so what's interesting when I do travel and, and especially with what we have coming up here, uh, that we're going to be announcing this weekend, uh -huh. the, um, it, it fits in because, you know, when I was traveling, uh, we were back to California for a funeral, uh, mm -hmm. in December and we stopped at a place in Vegas that had on the outside of it, it said, it said uh, best street tacos in Las Vegas. Okay. And so of course I had to do a live stream and it turns out that my, my followers absolutely loved me doing reviews on street tacos. So it kind of just <laughs> okay. plays in to be street taco eater and have, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, have that be just a part of what we do when we travel. So wow. I don't know if there was a lot of thought Bubba that went into it. I mean, it just was, <laughs> You know, it's, I'm a branding guy, so it's like, but, yeah. but I also feel like, you know, once you pick something, you build a brand and, and uh, an image around it more mm -hmm. than really having, oh, do I have this incredibly unique name? And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know that a ton of thought went into it. <laughs> well, you're right. I mean, I do see a lot of branding. You're branding from, um, which I definitely want to talk about, uh, the uh, 292. I'm sorry. 9292. 9292 uh, here yep. in a bit. Yeah. And yep. we'll talk about mental health. And we'll talk about what you're doing in mental health and talk a little bit about our son. <laughs> and but I I you know, I see your one million one million people. I've seen your uh the, the NFT metaverse world we lived in for, for some time. Boy, you, you have really you've been a follower or a, a reverse engineer. I love it. <laughs> well, there's one there's one thing before content creation starts the K. I'm just, it's now leaving me right now without my notes. Crack, cracked virtual? Crack, that's what it is. How's, yep. uh, you, so yes, I agree with your branding. You have, but I also think we have a lot in common because this is one of my like five shows because yep. I do a show where I interview people who are getting, who just got laid off and okay. want to get their CVs out. So I have that called Spotlight. And then I have another okay. show called Good Morning Gamers. And I have another show called The Rave Esports Show. And I have another show um, called, uh, I can't remember. I have, I have too many shows. So, but I, I also have ADD. So that I also know that um, I understand that uh, we with ADD have uh, also entrepreneurial spirit. So yep. I will chalk that up to that. Um, so I, 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 I think we have a little bit in common that we like branding. We like stuff, but, but I, I do love your content. I love what you've been making. I, I also love that you just have the message. Uh, oh, let's get right from the yard. And, uh... <clears throat> I'm almost back, almost back. I'm back. All right. Yeah, this controller, I, I'm tempted to switch back to mouse and keyboard on this uh, research. <laughs> yeah. I just, he, he, he caught me. I didn't even know he was there. And then 
I didn't either. I'm more talking to you than I. I oh. I'm, I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna lock in, bubba. No, this is part. Up. This is part of the game. This is part of the, this part of the show. <laughs> and for any of the viewers who are coming from your Discord, hello everyone from the Discord. We've got about 24 people watching, so thank you guys for being here. Um. So yeah, branding, street talk. Okay, yeah, I love. I love that you've got um. Kind of a story. Why? You, and maybe not even. A. Ch a real purpose around eater but now it's worked so well my my namer ta gamer tag is yo mr bubba because i i worked with a lot of kids and i always felt like they would say something cool or i would i guess i thought i was cool because they'd be like hey yo what's up mr bubba but maybe i just i'm too not cool enough really um so we also had um we had covid i want to I go to covid and then i want to talk about your yeah. beard yeah so so covid happened yep. um and you were pushing out um this big project and then COVID hit let's yep. let's talk a little bit about that you what is yeah. this what, what's this uh you know iterations of things you were doing and, and what happened pre and then as COVID started with some of your projects yeah yeah so we had in 2018 I had wanted to, so I, I've always loved the gaming community. I've always been a part mm -hmm. of the gaming community and I'm very protective of it. Yeah. But I also wanted to, <clears throat> uh, you know, there are a lot of people that say, hey, I want to have a career in gaming. Um, right. I would love to make money as a content creator, whichever. But where do you go to actually do that? So I came up mm -hmm. with the concept of Delta V Esports, which would be essentially a gaming, uh, there's a guy dropping in over here, okay. um, it's especially, you know, with uh, how do you develop skills specifically in those kinds of areas and where do you go? And the, the answer is there really isn't any place. Uh, it's, it's you know, you can find some more stuff now. So we uh, we got some investors. We built out a venue called Delta V Esports and it was going to be a um, a uh, an esports competitive simulator that would allow us to have teams to come in, compete uh, team versus team. Okay. And while they were competing, we would teach skill sets in coaching, in uh, IT, in camera equipment, um, wow. in uh, shoutcasting and all of that. So we had the entire venue built out. We spent about nine months building it out. Mm -hmm. And 11 days before we could open it to the public, COVID restrictions hit. Wow. And we never got to open it to the public, uh, which is with all that equipment and everything around, which is why I started streaming. But the intention for me has always been, what's the practical, pragmatic side of how we can help people have just you know, opportunities financially in gaming right. or a potential career, but where do you get those skills and how do you do it was mm -hmm. always um, kind of the, the issue for me. So that's what that was. Okay. Um, after that, um, when we realized we couldn't open the doors, I was approached by um, what became the new leadership of the esports stadium, Arlington. Okay. And uh, they really, I helped yeah, them out in a tight Envy, situation. Colby and Envy and all that? Uh... I mean, before no. Colby or or Jonathan? No. This was before. This was after Jonathan. Okay. So this was. So Envy how do I say Optic? this? Po no, this was before. Oh. This is between them. Really? So okay. yeah. So without getting into oh, sure, sure, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The weird drama stuff of it. This was the grandson <laughs> of Ray Davis, who is the majority owner of the Esports Stadium Arlington. Hmm. I mean, I mean, he's the no. I'm sorry. He's the majority owner of the Texas Rangers, and he's the one that funded oh, okay. the Esports Stadium. Okay. So right. there was a time when uh, his grandson um, didn't like the way things are being done. And so anyway, I won't get into all that stuff. Sure, I, sure, I, sure. Had, I had nothing to do with any of that. Okay. Once they decided they were going to take over, um, then they invited me to come over because I've been helping them out with some other things in my venue. And we decided that, uh, hey, I'd move over there and I would bring our, our curriculum and our efforts mm -hmm. into the stadium, um, which was great. And then... Um, I did that for about six months, but the problem is I didn't want to go to work for them. And I sure. felt like my brand, they were all great guys. I mean, I, yeah. I love all of them to this day, but they were, it, I was kind of becoming too tied to it. And it was kind of getting away from what my objectives were. Mm. So I said, Hey, listen, I'm going to go, I have a project I want to do, which ended up being called the Grady Sports Street Tour. Right, right. And yes. then I went out and uh, started filming, traveling and filming uh, people that were making money in gaming up top. Oh, I uh, forgot I had a one-shot gun. My bad. I don't even know where he is now. I'm about to get yeah, shot Yeah, they're, the they're both they're both on the roof. Oh, they're both I see. on the roof. It's right above you. About to get capped. I'm trying to stay alive. <laughs> and they've got and they've got back. snipers. Yeah, I got I got 17 oh. seconds. 
So I, oh, I did that kid. for, uh, I traveled around different parts of, uh, <laughs> yeah. But hey, listen, <laughs> regardless of where we finish, we're having yeah, a nice. blast. Yeah, it's very fun. Well, it's funny, uh, uh, Josh, I think it's Josh or Stu, but Level Up Arena, I don't know, Josh Gar, if you know, he's, he's saying, hey, we know this guy. He's in the chat right now saying what's up. What's up? Yeah, those guys are awesome. I traveled yeah. out uh, there in... Um... Well, I'm in Kansas City here. Yeah, here Kansas in... City. Yeah, yeah, we got a big event. We got a big event in June. We're doing Midwest Fest. Yeah, that was um, great. We did some content there. They have a great venue. They have a mm -hmm. great program there. I love those guys. Mm -hmm. So I, this, the the eSports, great eSports tour. No, great eSports. The great eSports street tour. Street tour. Street tour. I missed yep. it. And yeah, I saw you went to a lot of different places. I saw that you were at, at the um, eSports Auckland Stadium on some of your content, which is funny because I was there last May for the Collegiate eSports uh, Commissioner's Cup, and I'll be there okay. uh, in May again. I'll be there um, May 3rd, 4th, and 5th for awesome. the, if, if I know, I know you're, kind of, you're kind of close. So if you yeah. want to swing by, I'd love to have you there, yeah. uh, which is kind of funny because um, there's another... Yeah, that, that would be a, I'd love to get you in to come to that if you want to come. Yeah, just um, give me the information. Okay. Um, so, because it's, it's a huge college event. I know people would love to hear from you. Awesome. Yeah, um, love to be there. Which there was another one. There's a, there's a, here, here in Kansas City, there's a big high school event. That's the one that I'm talking about with Level Up. That's at their big arena. They moved from, you probably visited when they were in the old country western bar that was kind of on a street front or a, yes. a storefront. Yeah, yeah, it was a converted mm -hmm. bar kind yeah, of thing. Which yeah, which is over, I mean, they did, it was so much fun there because there was a lot of activity Friday and Saturday yeah. night. But now they're in um, a, a converted basketball, double floor basketball arena. Oh, wow. Least, it's called Kemper Arena, but it's now it's um, High V Arena, which is the grocery store kind of chain around here. And um, they have a whole big space that's amazing. Oh, that's and awesome. we're doing the big national championship for colleges or high schools this year. Well, I can't, I can't wait to get out there and see it then. Yeah, hundred percent. So, okay, let's go to July twelfth, two thousand one. You had a very large beard, and then you didn't. <laughs> on July twelfth, two thousand one, on your social media, you decided to show everybody how you remove your beard with trimmers. <laughs> what was there? I know that's a diff that's a year for you that was a little difficult uh, that will you know if you want to talk about it or not um and was there like a hey i just ready to get rid of this thing or no it's my it's wife way simpler said you than that. kiss you kiss better without a beard i don't my know my wife hated it simple <laughs> as that she she was okay with me doing it one time i told her i wanted to do it one time and uh she was all right with that one time mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, no, she hated it. There wasn't. It was. It was something I wanted to do for quite a while. Sure. So I had it for about a year and a half. Um, it's also for anyone that has this like a sizable beard. It's a uh -huh. lot of work. Yes, it it's is. It's a lot of work. Yes, and, it is. Um, my wife started teasing me with things like, "You spend more time in the morning getting ready than I do." <laughs> it wasn't completely accurate, but I got her point. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just was time. It was. Mm -hmm. People ask me if I would grow it out again, and the answer would be yeah. no. I mean, it was fun, but, and I don't mind, my wife doesn't mind scruff or a little bit of a beard. Sure, sure. Um, Same. But yeah, there wasn't, it just was, I just felt like, you know what? It's time. <laughs> and uh, we did it. Well, Lance in the chat over on Facebook, or uh, uh, see Facebook, yes. He loves seeing gray beards playing, playing and streaming. <laughs> yes, we are, we are. I, I had, I think it was actually 2021, the summer of 2021, I started growing out and I have some streams from back then. And I, I just, I look back and I'm like, why did I do this? I look, so, I already look bad. And then I built this nasty beard upon my face that was just down the middle. I was like, golly. And uh, I, 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 yeah, I didn't, I didn't look great. Well, so. I'll tell you, beards get you a lot of attention. There, there's mm -hmm. something to be said sure. for that. I mean, I would have people stop me all the time. Hey, what do you use? Hey, Epic Beard. Hey, you know, it's great. Uh -huh. right, um, right, I right. even was talking with, uh, some beard product companies that want oh, to wow. do some stuff. Nice. Um, but it, yeah, in the end, it's it's a lot of work, um, mm -hmm. and you get food stuck in it all the time. So it's kind of <laughs> now. I will tell okay. you the very the very first the very first thing, and I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm gonna okay. get in trouble for this. Okay. But my uh, my wife says, so my dad had a. I, I didn't grow up with my dad, but I had, we had a relationship mm -hmm. right. uh, when I was an adult, mm -hmm. and um, he always had a beard. And so the first time my beard really started to grow. Uh, my wife, I went to kiss her goodbye or something for the day, and, and she said yeah. she kind of backs away as I'm going to give her a goodbye kiss. She says, "Oh, you look like your dad." 
<laughs> and I, right there, I kind of knew, yeah, this isn't going to stick around very long. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I I look like my brother too many times uh, when I make noises or breathe or exist, and I hate it because we we look too much alike and uh, we're just both weird. So yeah, I I, I I get the looking like other people for sure. <laughs> okay, so let's get through. So we're we're COVID. I, I definitely want to jump into mental health. And yep. uh, in December in 2021, um, you know, and you, don't feel awkward. Okay. I'm happy. With, I mean, okay. we talk, I talk about it all the time. So okay. yeah, you don't need to feel okay. uncomfortable. Great, thank you. Um, you you had you talked about and uh, when you came back to social media in that January. Oh gosh, there's a guy right above you. Ah, oh, I cracked him a little bit. He's over here. This is horrible timing to talk about. That's all right. That's all right, all right. We this got is, this. This is, this is the integration. I think he's in his bathroom. I have my audio turned down so low. Okay. So yeah, I can't hear anything. Well. Yeah. I just luckily saw somebody. No, he's not in his bathroom. Okay. He left. So right. you you well, talked about well. it was a year-long struggle mental health with your yep. son. Um, yep. With your son, Mitchell. Yep. Your oldest son. And Our oldest son. Yep. And it's funny enough, my wife's birthday is September 2nd. Oh wow! Okay. Um, yeah, she was born in '83, so she's a little older. Someone's dropping right here. Oh, I'm coming! Nice. As I didn't even reload. Okay. Um, There's another guy over here in the building. Yeah, yeah. I see the red dot. I see the red dot. He's dropping in. Somewhere in here. Oh, he's behind me. Cracked him. He's behind Cracked me. He's up top. Oh, there's another dude behind me. He's trying to push. He's to your left. Oh, there's a guy to your left and flying in. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's all right. We, we can run. Run, Forrest, run. Oh, crap. He's got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's four guys here. Yeah, there's so many people there. Oh, my goodness. We walked into... Okay, good job. Good job. Yeah, there's guys everywhere. What what mode What mode do you like playing, actually? Um, I'm more... I've been playing a lot of um, uh, just multiplayer. Oh, so yeah, I've let's do playing... multiplayer. Let's do multiplayer. Um, that, that, that that takes a we've lot. We've been doing a lot. So there's like like now there's shipment and, and uh -huh. uh, the rooftop. There's right. so there was DOS house and mm -hmm. so uh, small map mosh pits have been a lot of fun. The main reason I've been playing smaller, faster maps is because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get my controls down with uh, using sense. a controller instead of mouse and keyboard. Makes sense. I'm gonna make you leader so you can pick the what you need here. Okay. Because I am so unfamiliar, and I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that. There I don't go. even know how to do that. Nope. I'm gonna lead the party. You can invite me. Let's do it that way. <laughs> okay. So let's make sure I can do that correctly. <laughs> okay. So you were asking. So mental, mental health, year long struggle, mental health. I know yeah. this has led into the foundation. I know this led into what you're doing now with Game Strong, Live Longer, or Game Strong, Live Stronger, uh, yep. for mental health. In this documentary you were talking about the other day on your stream uh, for the summer, but like, let's. What 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 do we need to know about mental health? Um, and <clears throat> what what are the important factors we should um, be aware of? Well, it's so just to give some background to mm -hmm. the viewers in the start of, um, and I'll start a game here in just a second. Sure. So I can just get through this. So in, in, the, in the beginning of 2021, so my wife and I have been married 35 years. We have six children, um, and Mitch uh, was our oldest son. And in the beginning of January 2021, we began to realize that he was having some mental health issues of different kinds. And we're a very close family, so we talk about everything. But as the year progressed, we realized it was much more significant. So you ask, what is it that we realized with this? It was that there are, so over the course of this year, so I'll just fast forward. In December 7th, 2021, we lost him to his, uh, his struggle with mental health. There were three main things that we learned through that that process. Number one is the mental health care system is completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, there is too much demand and, mm -hmm. and too many. There are wonderful people trying to do so much. You just, they just yeah. can't meet the demand. Number two, there are people all around us suffering in silence and you would never know it. Um, I would tell people all the time that, look, every time you meet someone, treat them as though they're having major problems in your life in their life. And you're going to be yeah. right most of the time. 
um, we started to see that from other people from the outside. Mitch was a six foot three, incredibly handsome, one of the nicest human beings you ever meet. Tennis pro um, comes from a close family. His parents are I me. Mean, all those things from the outside, you would say, hey, he's got it. But on the inside, there was more going on for him. Yeah. And so what I realized through that very quickly was that, and these were conversations that he and I would have, you know, dad, I don't feel like I belong. Dad, I don't feel like I'm, I have anyone I can connect with that understands what's going on in my head. Uh, dad, you know, I don't feel like I have any skills that I'll be able to raise a mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, support a family. He says, I don't, you know, I don't, and the world seems like a very unkind place. And so those were things that were, you know, consistently on, on his, on his mind. And so what I realized is that gaming, and I'm kind of condensing the story here, but gaming can provide and does provide for millions of people those four things a place a place that you can belong people that you can connect with mm -hmm. skills that you can develop and done in the right way in the right environments kindness and yeah. so i decided that we can leverage this global you know connection that we have to to be able to take advantage of pro providing those four things yeah. And so there have so I started the 9292 Foundation, which was his birthday, September 2nd, 1992, and decided that we can't. This is harder when you're really trying so to focus hard. on the game. <laughs> so we um, there's there are the the foundation will have um, all kinds of initiatives. There's some things my wife wanted wants to do and. Mm -hmm. But the Game Strong, Live Stronger initiative is one that's focused on providing, doing all that we can through every resource that we can provide a place to belong, people to connect with, skills develop, and kindness. Oh. And so, oh my goodness. This is a crazy map. I'm actually yeah. really loving this. Yeah, this is, a, so this is a crazy that map. We're, we're, we're talking about all this nonsense, or this, like we're playing, we're playing this nonsense and we're talking about something super serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, we all know if you've been part of a gaming community, how important they are, uh, benefits that they can bring if they're done correctly. And so I've started through the content to say, how can we, let's get that message out. Gaming can be these things and should be these things. Um, okay. And so that's the initiative. So the, the 9292 Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. Okay. Um, Oh, this one girl just wants to sit right in this one hallway and I'm not All right. Best sound of the game right here. Boom. Get that off. Okay. Um, and so, like I said, there'll be different initiatives. The game strong live stronger is, is, is one of the initiatives that mm -hmm. I'm currently working on. Now we yeah. have a new announcement that we're going to make tomorrow. I can give you, oh. I, I oh, can okay. share with you. <laughs> what that's going to be early okay you're in here uh, first folks so when i did the great esports street tour hold on where'd this little pumpkin go come on you little corn on the cob um when i did the great esports street tour i, I really love I, I love being with people i love being out um in a practical yeah. way telling stories and letting people know um sorry I, like you're getting They're me into full game mode left. Um, so when I did the Grady Sports Street Tour, that was great in terms of a financial thing. What I'm doing now is we're in, we're going to release tomorrow, um, okay, the Great Gamer Street Tour. Oh, and what, okay. what that's going to be is I am going to build content for a, do a future documentary that will do the end of the year, and it will be recording all of the stories from gamers themselves and uh, mental health care professionals as well of how gaming helps them deal and cope with the strains and stresses of mental health and emotional well-being. Now, since the loss of our son, I've literally talked with, in one form or another, thousands of people from around the world who find gaming to be an incredible resource for them in their dark times, right? A place where they can, right. again, find feel as though they belong, they can um, connect with others who understand them and what they're going through. They can learn skills of all kinds and the way that we're gonna do it, find kindness. And so I wanna record those stories. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna travel 
from in June, July, and August mm -hmm. uh, to every state in the continental U.S. I'm going to do a road wow. trip, and I'm going to film content, sharing all of that, live streams every day, gameplay recorded wow. content, and then we will be doing, like I said, we'll take all of that and do a documentary. That's that's amazing. Um, at the end of it. So what's really kind of exciting about it, um, and what, what the reason I say we'll be announcing this tomorrow. So a company called called um, Oversubscribe reached out to okay. me. The right. founders yeah. reached out to me. And they said, hey, we think this could be a great resource for you. Um, and the way that it works, just to give you a brief explanation, is yeah, unlike, a, you know, to do something like this, a road trip like this is probably going to be probably in the $40,000 neighborhood, right? To fund all of this, the editors, the travel, all the other things that go along with it. So compared to crowdsourcing or, or typical Patreon or anything like that, mm -hmm. oversubscribe is actually an SEC, um, an SEC, what's the word I'm looking for based. I mean, they are, they, they're an SEC regulated. Okay. Is what I'm, sure. I guess I'm saying, um, platform that allows you to have investors actual investors that are your followers or the people that want to see you do this and yeah. um you can actually have the opportunity to provide a return well, the way that it works and and so i'm giving it half justice because you got sure. me into this game mode i love this map <laughs> you see that you're doing this like eating hot wings like uh -huh. you said right it's like so what happens is if someone believes in the work you know, I have a lot of people that donate to the foundation, a lot of people that, you know, that subscribe to our, you know, content, every content creator has that, or they'll donate and, or give gifts and TikTok, whatever. Right. The difference here is that they can actually become investors in the opportunity. And it's more than, okay. than just yeah. the opportunity. In other words, everything that's generated in the street taco eater brand from content, live streams, gifts, subscriptions, all of it goes through their... Oh my goodness! Didn't work at all. <laughs> Goes through their management, and okay. um, a percentage of it's taken and held uh, and managed by them, and then every year that dividend is paid out. So everything from not just the street tour, and I set the terms and the length. So let's say we haven't decided on what it is yet, but let's say that it's that it's three years, and you get twelve percent, right? And then you can donate as low as fifty dollars, or, or invest as low as fifty dollars. To I had someone last night, you know, saying they're going to commit three thousand right out of the gate. Wow. And but it's an actual investment, right? So it's more than just like a gift. And so you you have a much more active role. And so that was actually very intriguing to me because now we can do this work, have people be a part of it with an actual opportunity to have a return um, on all of that work. So, you know, you never know. I mean, you know, what if in the course of of you know, these three years mm -hmm. we have 10 million followers and the kinds of revenues, whether it's ad revenue or subscriptions or donations or whatever the people that invest in the uh invest in what i'm doing as a follower get a part of that for that period of time so that makes me excited because a lot of people i have people asking me every day hey what can i do to help how can i support this and and they um you know and, and they do a lot of things i have people that are you know doing charity streams yeah um in our name because we're a we're a Streamlabs verified charity um and that's great but now they can actually do something that that this is harder this is i see why you do this <laughs> you're <laughs> talking about you know and you, you you said this on quite a few streams and things so you know it's it's still not easy even though you know all the content it's that you're it's, it's about. not yeah it's not easy this is you know i, I love it okay no i don't want to do the hold on i don't want to do that I'm enjoying um, just laying down the ground, sniping people down this hallway. This is kind a of fun. lot of people do. That's exactly what a lot yeah, of people I'm, do. I'm that guy right now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to announce that we're going to do the way that it starts is you do an interest poll. So we'll be releasing uh, this weekend an interest poll where people can say, yeah, you know, I would I would be interested in doing this. Here are the details. You know, I would likely and, you know, invest this much. And uh, then we can start to gauge, OK, what do we, you know, mm -hmm. Where are we at with it? So that's that's what's going on. That you got you're the first one to hear it here. Wow. Okay. Well, the the big deal of street taco eater and the content. I had reviewed. I looked at that oversubscribe.co and it looked pretty yeah. cool. Um, 
trying to understand it compared to what is it? What would you compare it to or not compare it to in, in sense of other influencer type models or, well, I didn't, I haven't really seen anything like it. Um, because you know, typically, and I've done fundraising for different things, different businesses over the years. So you typically have crowdsourcing, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. of different kinds of things. And that's very common. Yeah. Um, but that's so you know you might get a t-shirt or maybe an early release right, of an album right. or something and, and people are happy to do it because they believe in it or if you do a patreon right or someone subscribes to you all those kinds of things are great and those are yeah. very normal what's different right. here is that you're actually investing <clears throat> in the street taco eater brand mm -hmm. and it's not so you have a chance to you know a lot of people don't have a hundred thousand dollars to invest sure. in a business somewhere sure. but hey if i put in 50 <clears throat> bucks or a couple hundred bucks um because i believe in this then mm -hmm. that's really the difference is it's an investment um completely monitored by them so i'll, I'll give you the, yeah. just the nuts and bolts it's very simple so in partnering with them they set up an llc so it's all control there's accountability i then wow. link all of my revenue streams from my brand into okay. the llc and a bank account and then when every month when that money comes through, how, you know, TikTok pays every week or whatever it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it goes in, they take out the percentage for the investors and hold that for a year. And then they, they pay out dividends uh, annually. And then so that way they're actually monitoring this full accountability for everything that I'm generating. And uh, the people that invest, number one, you invest in something like this because you believe in the person and what they're doing. That's That's obviously the number one thing. The number two thing is that hey, I can I want to support that. Wow, this is really cool that I could potentially you know earn a, a significant return. Yeah. So um, you know I spent probably two weeks. I've had four Zoom calls with the founders. Um, I really wanted to vet them. I really wanted to see is this legit? Is this something mm -hmm. that we could really leverage to get our message out? Because the end the end mission for me is about shortly after we lost our son. I read a mm -hmm. quote that said. Mm -hmm. You can't save everyone, but everyone can save someone. Ooh. And so my mission this year in 2024 is to have a million someones or a million uh, everyone's to, to help save a million someones. Wow. Okay. And so that's that's the so the big thing for this, the big push for this is to do this tour to to, to visit 48 states in 90 days and film content um, and share it with everyone and get the beyond just the message that mental health is a challenge, let's find some practical ways that we can help use this incredible community um, to give people the four things we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah. And so more than just asking for the support, this is a way of saying, I'm going to do this. You've seen what we've been doing for the last number of years. Mm -hmm. And I would love for you, if you have the ability to invest and, and I'll do everything I can to get you a great return. Um, and that's, that was, so it makes it doubly fulfilling for me in that now, <clears throat> now we can, we can oh, even. Oh, the rust, baby. Sorry. Yeah. We're playing rust. Um, have you played rust in a while? Um, yeah. Not for actually, the OG days. Uh, I've played it maybe the last year, but okay. I honestly, I also played it on Fortnite creative. Too, oh, okay. Made, All right. Or All UNEFN, right. UEFN, or whatever. Yep. Yep. Right. I was just watching a video about some new stuff on, Uf, on e, uh, UEFN. And I talked with one of the guys at, uh, at a place I spoke at at the stadium, mm -hmm. one of the um, epic uh, guys that works on that. And we were talking about doing some cool stuff together. So, anyway, that's. Yeah, that's right. That's what. Uh, so, the Great Gamer Street Tour is uh intended to start um june 1st but right now tomorrow okay. or sunday we'll release the um audience interest poll and that'll be simply a chance to say wow. yeah i would like to do this i would anticipate i would you know be willing to invest this much a hundred dollars fifty dollars whatever it is and that'll help us be able to gauge you know before we ever start is this something that people really have an interest in and we'll be able to do some great stuff with um or is there no interest and we'll go about it another way sure i love that man i love that <clears throat> oh this guy knifed me oh okay oh whatever. yeah whatever oh, bro yeah yep. whatever, bro you got a lot of run around in knifers watching these re watching these flicks of people like, come on there's no way you flick like that you're not a this 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 game i've talked about 
was talking to somebody. I was talking to somebody this morning at church, actually, about the guy who plays Call of Duty Zombies. Yeah. Um, and I told him to watch. I know he's kind of busy right now, but I, because we're going to play Call of Duty. I was like, look, Call of Duty Zombies compared to Call of Duty Warzone and compared to um, then multiplayer, that is yeah. three different levels of toxicity. <clears throat> In zombies, it's a lot of people who really don't play the game, but they love playing that part of the game and just like relaxing and killing zombies. Yep. yep. Then Warzone, there's toxicity, and there are people in there who, when you get close enough, they 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 teabag you or whatever when they when you die. <laughs> yep. Yep. But then multiplayer is its own level of racism and toxicity. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's why I don't ever have game chat on, right? And yes, we all same. know that there's that there's toxicity and negativity in gaming. Oh my goodness, where'd this guy go? Oh, I um, just job. Yes. But that's one of the one of the things that I'm very focused on changing, right? There's a lot of bad perceptions about gaming. Yeah. yeah. And the, is that we as gamers have to have some responsibility in how the world sees it, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, gaming is this, it's so toxic. Well, you know, we got to treat it better. I mean, it's in, right. it's not what it used to be. It's not like just going to the arcade. Gaming and gaming opportunities Pretty sure my game are, are completely different and very yeah. real in all kinds of ways. Whether you just want it to be fun entertainment mm -hmm. or you want it to be a career or you want it to be, you know, a part-time gig. Right. That didn't used to exist. But if you want, I always kind of talk about it back in the sense when I, I was, I was on a skateboard team when I was young, BMX trick okay. team. And I remember when, hmm. <coughs> excuse me. I remember when, uh, um, what's his name? I, my, 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 Tony just Hawk. went blank. Yeah. Tony Hawk. I was mm -hmm. thinking Tony Alva who was before him <laughs> when Tony Hawk signed the first million dollar contract yeah. in skateboarding. I remember the skateboarding community just going sideways. Oh, it's going to be all corporate. It's going right. to be, you're going to take all the soul <laughs> out of it. And my first thought was, listen, you want to make There are people now making a living out of this. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but you also have to treat it kind of more professionally, right? Same thing in gaming. Mm -hmm. I mean, now you mm -hmm. have the ability to, to do almost anything you want with a content creator, professional, I mean, professional gamers, way, way more unrealistic. But if you want yeah. people to respect gaming, you have to respect gaming yourself. So the toxicity and those kinds of things, you're never going to make it all go away, but you can definitely help people to elevate it so that the opportunities will continue to pour in, if that makes any sense. 100%. I, I love that analogy uh, back to, to skating to now. Cause I've only gone back like 15 years of the, especially working in the scholastic space with schools and my game yep. crash, by the way, which is kind of perfect timing because we're wrapping up. Okay. <laughs> um, but I've always compared, uh, gaming now of, uh, <clears throat> in the scholastic space schools with, uh, robotics clubs, um, yep. 10, 15 years ago and how people thought, well, why, and this is dumb and why are we doing this? And kids, mm -hmm. won't, kids won't learn anything and it'll be distracted. Yep. Blah, blah. blah. And I love that analogy of, well, I, I love the analogy of the, the, what you talk about with professional, professional skateboarders, mm -hmm. which also makes me think of, you know, America and soccer and like a, soccer was really not a big thing. And you thought it was just for girls or whatever mm -hmm. in the eighties and nineties. And then Mia Hamm came around and changed the thing and, uh, swimming with, um, uh, the guy with the big long arms who does this. Um, well, after Mark Spitz, yeah, not Mark Spitz, well, but the, one, the one who yeah. broke all of his records. Yes, got like yes. nine golds or whatever that one. It'll come yep. to me, the guy who does Subway eat food. So, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, those, the, I was, it's funny, I was just talking about this this morning to some people, and it, the, these, these funny, these guys in my church group, they're, they're much older than me, and i just talking about change. Change is inevitable, mm -hmm. and change is, is really good. <clears throat> and uh, I think definitely gaming and where we're at and all the stuff you push on social media about the benefits of game is great. And I want to put some of that, I want to share some of that content if you let me and put that Absolutely. out on more, more platforms. But, um, we, we luckily my game, well, kind of luckily my game dropped out, but we're, we're, we're done with our hour, but I want to give you the last 60 second hot seat okay. to get the, get the camera to yourself here, uh, the screen to yourself. And you talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Um, you can promote any socials or whatever you want to do or recap anything. Um, but I'm going to give you the 60 second hot seat and the screen is all yours. Okay. 
Well, number one, I appreciate very much being here with you, Bubba. I've, I've loved your work. I follow you, and I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, it, it is what more of us need to do. I think the biggest thing that I would say to those that are gamers and what I really talk about all the time in this community is that we have to understand the power of what we really have our hands on. Um, there are, as I'm focused now with the foundation and now we'll be doing the Great Gamer Street Tour, is helping helping people. I have people from all over the world almost daily reach out to me and tell me, hey, if it wasn't for what you're doing, if it wasn't for this content, if it wasn't for gaming, I literally wouldn't be here today. Um, I have people in my stream every day talking about their struggles and then people in my stream jump in and say, hey, let's talk offline. Let's, you know, you can get through this. There are so many people around us and, and it may be you, it may be others in your you know, close loved ones or friends are, are just suffering in silence and gaming has an ability. And this is why, and I've been a gamer for over 40 years. I think I can speak in an OG status and say, listen, gaming is very dear to me, very special to me. Our kids have all been raised uh, gaming together. But we have an opportunity to leverage this globally and literally change and save lives. And so if we start looking at gaming as that opportunity, and there are a lot of wonderful communities, discords, organizations, church groups that are doing great work. But if the minute we start really looking what we have our hands on and the way that it's used as, as a as not any kind of escape, I mean, it can be that. It can be pure entertainment. It can be just an, you know, an escape. But for a lot of people, it's very therapeutic and it's what gets them to the next day. So my whole mission and purpose this year is to build that message, take that message, do this documentary, share all of that, grow this following, because literally the more everyone's we have, the more someone's we can save. Now, next year, Bubba, just to let you know, if all goes well this year, we're going to Europe. So if you're over there in England, we're going to bring the, the, yeah. the Great Gamer Street Tour over to Europe. And because uh, I already have a whole European <laughs> okay. crew waiting. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do all. I mean, it's easy to get around in, in uh, Europe with all the trains. So it I'll is. go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. It'll be great, man. So that's it. That's mm -hmm. that's where we're at, Bubba. Thank you so much. Um, you have a great community, and it's just what a privilege to be with you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to keep watching and promoting your content. I'm going to send you a link uh, from the Video Games and Esports Foundation in our DMs on um, LinkedIn because okay. I, I try to put all all the stuff you talk about, you, you, you give data and resources and stuff in your videos. Um, there I put it's like a hundred pages of data so pick and choose what you want and just awesome if make if it makes it easier for you to find stuff um love use it. it please use love it. it yeah if people want to find me mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, I'm on all socials but but streettalkweeder.com is is the website and uh, there'll be a bunch of new stuff coming up here in the next few days especially around this but everything is at street taco weezer eater super easy to find and uh, I'd love to, you know I'm happy to talk with anyone anytime about this just like you are I know well, it is in the chat if you guys are there. Uh, if you guys want to check that out. Thank you so much. About 30, 30 some odd people watching. So thank you guys for coming. Street Taco Eater, I appreciate it. If you want to hang out in the control room, I'm going to shut down the show and I'll come uh, chat with you here in a minute. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Everyone, thank you so much for being here today on Invite Sent. This was season uh, three, episode 10. We, <laughs> we I, I don't know if playing Call of Duty is what we, uh, what I did today. Uh, but we had Call of Duty open uh, for a time, and it was being actively used. But uh, I definitely need to get back into it. And I accidentally uh, bought the game the other day, thinking I was getting the $70 version, and I clicked the $99 version. So I definitely have to use it now. And uh, I can't write this off. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to play it a lot more often with all my friends and uh, try to get some games in uh, with anybody out there. So thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, we'll be back on uh, next Thursday. We're going to have a show with um, a guy named Ed. Uh, we're going to talk about the metaverse, AI, uh, artificial intelligence, um, AR and VR uh, in the art audio video space on the Ray V Sports Show. Uh, we're also going to have some folks in different spaces from the Scholastic Space next Friday. We're going to have another episode of Invite Sent, and that's going to be with PK Graf. And I didn't bring his book, but we're going to go over his book called The Mindful Gamer. And we're going to go over his uh, book on the show and play something as well. And then we're going to have a break because the eclipse is coming. Um, and we're going to go down to, we're actually going to go down to Waco and watch the eclipse. And we'll have Bethany Piles, who's with Nasif, and also used to be with Cloud9 and Zach Teep here, BJ Fink as well, later down the road. So we've got a couple different people lined up. Check out the show. 
We're on all streaming platforms. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for coming. Everybody in the chat. Appreciate you guys. Lance, everybody else. Nick. Um, thank you so much, Josh. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Bye. Hello there gamers and mental health enthusiasts, today we're diving into a groundbreaking study that explores the intersection of scholarly gaming and mental health education, and how it can impact the self-esteem of adolescents. Picture this, a world where scholarly gaming isn't just about mastering technology-based career skills or dominating the world of video game business. No, it's a world where gaming becomes a gateway to improving mental health. Three visionary educators and a school-based health intervention expert came together to create a curriculum that aligns with academic guidelines from the International Society for Technology Education. This curriculum spans 40 lessons delivered over 14 weeks with a minimum of 120 minutes per week. But here's the twist. 83 schools were invited to participate, but they were divided into two groups, those with mental health moments and those without. The non-mental health moment group got the scholarly gaming curriculum alone while the mental health moment group got an extra layer of education. Mental health moments were embedded into 27 lessons, integrating concepts from the PERMA framework and the Collaborative Academic Social and Emotional Learning Standards, otherwise known as CASEL. Now, let's meet our players. 471 participants from both groups, with almost 75% in high school, many experiencing scholarly gaming for the first time. A majority were male, and the racial diversity was broad. At the start, the average self-esteem score was 17.9, with 22.1% reporting low self-esteem. But hold on, the game's just beginning. As the study progressed, it revealed some fascinating results. While 57.7% of participants with low self-esteem at the beginning reported average self-esteem post-intervention, the Mental Health Moments group stole the spotlight. Self-esteem scores improved by 8.3% in the Mental Health Moments group, compared to no change in the non-Mental Health Moments group. How's that for a power-up? Some students even shifted from abnormally low self-esteem scores to normal ranges. The message is loud and clear. Educators, healthcare providers, and adolescent advocates pay attention. Non-traditional educational instructions, like scholarly gaming, combined with mental health moments, can significantly improve students' well-being. And there you have it, a journey through the power of scholarly gaming and mental health moments. Remember, your self-esteem matters, and sometimes all it takes is a little extra support to level up. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Until next time, keep gaming, keep learning, and most importantly, keep believing in yourself. Life is busy. Every day we ask questions like, what's happening today? What should I wear? How am I gonna fit everything in? But then there are bigger questions like, why am I here? What's my purpose? Where am I heading? Is there more to life than this? These are some of life's big questions, but there's rarely enough time to think them through. That's why Alpha exists. Alpha is a place to explore life's big questions in a safe and open environment. It's a series of sessions where anyone can share their thoughts and opinions and ask questions without feeling judged. When you come to an Alpha, you'll notice that first, there's food. Whether it's a full meal or a light snack, this is the time to get to know each other in a casual setting. Next, you'll watch an Alpha talk. The talks are created to engage and spark conversation. They explore big issues around faith from a Christian perspective. After the talk is a time for discussion. This is the most essential part of any Alpha. 
It allows everyone to share their own opinions on the ideas presented in the talks. It's a time for people with different thoughts, beliefs, and experiences to ask honest questions and have open conversation. Every week, there are guests coming for the first time to an Alpha in their community. Alpha is for everyone, regardless of background or beliefs. There's no pressure, no follow-up, and it's completely free to attend. Come and explore life's big questions. Find an Alpha near you today.